My name's Ned, this is my dog Jai, and this is Microsoft Power BI, natively writing back to Microsoft Excel. So how does this work? Well, I'm using a new function of Microsoft Power BI called Translytical Task Flows and User Data Functions, which you'll be hearing me constantly refer to as user-defined functions completely accidentally. Just accept that. But these user data functions allow you to essentially run Python via your Microsoft Power BI report and provide inputs into that Python code from slicers, tables, so on and so forth. Now, this video is part of a series that I'm doing on this new feature because it's huge. You'll probably have initially heard about this feature in terms of reading and writing back to Microsoft Fabric databases. But as you just saw, it can do a lot more than that. I was just reading and writing back to Microsoft Excel there. So how does this work? Well, let's jump in. So the Power BI report itself is nothing special. I'm simply importing a table off an Excel file that's sitting on a SharePoint site. And then I've brought values from that Excel file into a local table visual right here. Then I've created three text slicers and a button. This button is what's running all of the magic. So as you can see, the action has now been set to a data function and the data function exists in test. The function is set to write back. The data function name is write to Excel. And then the ID value, I've just gone through and set these first names. So really simple, straightforward report. Now the user data function that I'm using in this Power BI report is where things get just a little bit more complicated. You see, I'm using what are called service principles. Service principles essentially allow you to interact with Microsoft services without a specifically logged in user. If you are interested in learning more about them, I'll link a video down below in the video description where I refresh a Power BI report with a service principle. And I show you how to do the same. All that said though, I'm using the service principles in this user data function for two things. One, a service principle to read and to write to the Excel file on the Share, SharePoint site that the Power BI report is referencing. And two, to actually refresh the Power BI semantic model after I've written to the Excel file. So what that means is that I have a user data function that looks like this, that we can basically split into two parts. The first part right here is taking the inputs that were passed to the function up here and then using a request to post them onto the Excel file that's sitting on my SharePoint. And then the second part is authenticating into my Microsoft Power BI tenant, submitting a refresh request, and then sleeping for 10 seconds before coming back with a response to Power BI saying, hey, the row was added successfully. Now I'm doing two things in this code that you should not do, mainly because I'm lazy. One, <laughs> I have the client secrets there in plain text and not in Azure Key Vault. And two, I am making two separate API requests with two separate service principles to two different tenants. And that's just because when I bought my own personal version of Office 365, for whatever reason, I did it on a different tenant than the one where I set up kind of my play Microsoft Power BI environment. So there's, there's some extra complexity in this code. But that said, I wanna draw your attention to how a few things are happening behind the scenes. First, I'm using just standard Python packages. You can add and create your own packages by clicking right here to library management, and then essentially installing the packages that you want from PyPy, right? And this is very straightforward and very easy to do. For example, if I wanted to add one, I could click right here and I could start typing and it would just load in. So like if I wanted to put in semantic link, right? Or semantic version, right? Boom. That's how you add additional functionality to these user data functions. The other thing that I wanna to talk to you about is how I set up the service principle to write back to Excel. And that's pretty straightforward. I actually just created an app. I gave it the permissions of site read, write all, which by the way, this is kind of a lazy way to do it. You can actually grant it specific access to a specific site 
don't do this. But again, took the shortcut, but I gave it access to sites, read, write all. I then created an active directory group called Excel file read, write. I then went to the SharePoint site where this is stored and I granted that AD group access to the site as a site owner. Now, whenever this runs, it essentially reads and writes directly to this table. Now, one thing that was a little bit tricky about this was that I had to find my SharePoint site ID, but this is something that I was able to use Microsoft Graph Explorer for, which by the way, is a really cool tool if you haven't checked it out. It's a Microsoft tool and it allows you to experiment with all kinds of APIs. But once I had my site ID, the code was relatively straightforward. Submit an API request to Excel to add the row, submit an API request to Microsoft Power BI to refresh the semantic model, sleep for 10 seconds, then return back to Power BI, hey, your file's refreshed, and then Power BI will automatically re-refresh the report once it gets confirmation that the UDF has run successfully. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I can put data in here into my report, so I can go Jai, last name, the Husky, and then click right back to Excel. And if we give our code a hot second to run, we will soon see data in both our Excel file and in our Power BI report. So as you can see right there, it just appeared. And if we go back now into our Excel file on SharePoint, there's the data. Now this setup has some flaws. I'll be the first to admit it. First, if multiple people are trying to use it and refresh the data set, that could create some problems. Second, what if the data set refresh takes more time than the 10 seconds I told the code to wait for trying it? And the third, it's Excel, SharePoint, and Power BI, and I'm not the best coder. So there's probably some bugs in there. But hopefully this quick demo was cool enough that you want to subscribe to the channel and follow along as I explore different ways to use this new feature. And I'll leave the code from that data flow linked on my GitHub down below in the video description for you to take and manipulate. Again, though, fair warning, not the best coder. And with that, thanks for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day.